Hi all, welcome to my channel. I do want to start off this video by saying this is going to be the first video in a series I'm planning. These videos are going to highlight unsolved crimes in the New England area, and each episode will feature a small handful of those crimes. Now, the biggest reason I'm creating this series is to help spread awareness and to ensure that those who may have lost their lives won't be forgotten and to also ensure that those who have committed these crimes are brought to justice. Also, any sources I use will be listed in the description box, so you may also do research into any of these cases. Now, first, I'd like to cover the story of Denise Robert. So Denise Robert lived in Bedford, New Hampshire, and this was often her tradition to go for walks on Sundays. So she was on her evening walk on August 30th, 2015. Now Denise was on a walk on Ray Street in Manchester, New Hampshire. And again, this was a walk she is very familiar with and often took each Sunday. Now on this particular Sunday, those who lived in the area of Ray Street, where she was walking, recalled hearing what sounded like a gunshot. And they may have also noticed a red pickup truck that seemed to leave the area in a hurry not long after that gunshot was heard. Now, not too long after this occurred, Denise Robert was found on Ray Street, and she did pass away from a gunshot wound to the head. Unfortunately, so far, there are no witnesses that have come forward that witnessed or know any information about this event. And so far, really, there's no word if anyone at all has come forward. Now, I did take a look through some reports, some records, um, both from WMUR.com and TheUnionLeader.com, which are both local news resources. And what they say is that as of 2017, the police stated they're still searching for the bullet involved, and there's been no update on that. Also, there was a lot of help offered throughout this case, both from the FBI, who even assisted with the investigation, and the neighborhood, who offered any assistance they could. According to the resources I've looked through, both WMUR and the Union Leader, they are stating that at least 100 locals met to discuss this event and see what they may be able to do. Now, ultimately, even with the help of both the FBI and the locals, there was really no development in this case for quite a while. The next big development occurred in 2017, August 19th, and there was a search warrant that was executed in a home in Londonderry, New Hampshire, with possible connections to her death. However, I was not able to find any reports that anything came from that. I'd also like to add that both WMUR and the union leader have been writing articles and um, keeping the locals updated with this case even as of last August 2020. So certainly they still are trying to keep everyone informed about this case and get any information that anyone has. Um, the most recent update we've had about a reward would be that they are offering $40,000 if you offer information that leads to an arrest and conviction in this case. And I'd also like to read a little bit about some of the articles um, because one thing I haven't yet mentioned is Denise Robert was 62 years old and she was you know, a very kind woman. Her family here on this Union Leader article says that she's very missed, that they don't know anyone who would ever want to do this, so they have no clue what could have happened. And so far, it has really run cold. They said it's here in the Union Leader. Um, her brother, Thomas Robert, is quoted saying, this was a shock for all of us.
Now, the next case that I do want to cover is about a man who went missing in Maine, and this was 21 years ago. He went missing in the year 2000. Now, it's quite unfortunate because there's not a lot of information on this case. Really, all that I can find is a missing poster and a couple of posts on Facebook in the past, say, six or seven years, that kind of go over that he's missing and the basic details. Now, the other thing I'll mention is I can see that it's written on news sites and on Facebook that there were interviews conducted throughout the years, that there were multiple leads in his disappearance, that foul play was suspected, but they don't list any interviews with any family or friends. I can't find any news articles, so perhaps I'll need to do a little bit of further digging, but I'd like to also cover this disappearance as well. So the man who disappeared was named George Boardman. He was a 70-year-old man in the year 2000. He was born in 1930, so he would be in his early 90s at this point. Now, he did have roommates. That's one thing I could find. And they reported him missing about a month after he went missing. So he had already been missing for a whole month before this was even reported. And what was strange was his vehicle was found abandoned, but this was about 70 miles from his home in Bingham, Maine, and it was found in a parking lot, and it was located a month after he was last seen, so that was in November. So it was quite a while before they even found that vehicle, and that is the only lead I can find on this case. So I will continue to do research on George Boardman, but it really seems that since it's been such a long amount of time that there's very little to be seen or found about this case. I can find that even the Maine State Police have posted within the last year or so on their Facebook about Mr. Boardman. However, you can look through the comments on that Facebook post and um, really look on any of these sites and the information you find is very, very basic. So it's quite unfortunate and I'm hoping that perhaps there's more information to be found and it just requires more research. So that was our first look into Denise, Denise Roberts and George Boardman. I would love to know what you guys think about these cases. They are strange. They're really sad. It's really difficult to see that um, someone could just disappear without a trace and there's very little information on him. I really, like I said, couldn't find much of anything. And then with Denise Robert, everyone said she was wonderful. She had no enemies. It's so sad to see these kind of things happen. And ultimately, what I'd like to do with this series is just bring attention to these cases that aren't solved. Maybe it will do some good. At the very least, it can keep their memories alive. And I think it's important to not only highlight those cases that make national news, that um, are global sensation, so to speak. It's important to remember these are all people with loved ones, families, at some point or another, they had people in their lives who cared for them and they are missed. So that's what I'm trying to do with this series. Please let me know if you'd like to receive an update about this, maybe in the future. I can do more research on these cases or if there are any other cases you'd like me to cover. Thanks.